What's up Manifesto fam? Welcome back to another video. This is Daniel and uh, I, w I just got back from a trip out to the west coast where we hosted an event called Sons and Servants and uh, over the next few weeks I'll be posting d different clips of what happened uh, but the first one I want to release is the foot washing experience and revelation that God really released and really breathed upon in our time together and uh, it was Saturday night uh, where uh, Jacob Kasten and Elijah Ivanov uh, and a few others that had began to cultivate this uh, from the beginning of this year they had really uh, felt the Lord calling them into doing this truth practicing this truth of foot washing and they had started practicing in the early of this year and I really believe and I really saw how Though because of their stewardship of doing it in their own home with people that are coming in in those small moments of time uh, it really led up to this moment where we opened it up for these these 70 other young guys to come and receive foot washing and let me tell you the, the amount of healing and just power of God that was released in restoration and wholeness was just incredible and so um, here's a clip of our discussion afterwards and just a few of them sharing about this truth and I really believe that God is restoring this truth to the body. But, but you know, it's just obviously warm water, yes. not cold. We're not tickling the bottom of their feet. And, <laughs> and just, just really just, just you know, just, just praying for them, right? It's really yeah. just prophesying, you know, if it's, if it's in response to something, so a wound, obviously addressing that with our, the words of the Father, the heart of the Father, um, and, then, and then just prophesying and blessing, you know, and the Spirit obviously does everything, not just the rest, but everything. And, um, and so just saying it's a good thing to put in your toolkit. You could do it in a, in a service or just you're talking with your friend or you're talking with some guy. You know, the older we get, the more people are going to see us as older brothers, as fathers that are able to address these wounds that were caused by older brothers and fathers, yeah. right? So and so it's just, yeah. So for me, I learned a lot. towards that a little bit? Like, because Jacob's the one that kind of brought it to our community. And now it's become like a ministry. Yeah, a ministry of the Spirit of God that absolutely annihilates the flesh and activates people into the Spirit. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. But tell us just some of the, the principles that you use, just so that people can add this into their tool belt and use it most effectively. Things you've learned that are most effective in creating an atmosphere and how do you, how do you approach this? So initially, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't like feet. I'm, a, I'm not a germaphobe, but I'm very much like a person that does not like feet, yes, okay? Yes. So I'm just saying naturally speaking, but I remember the Holy Spirit spoke to me one day to, to wash the feet of this, of this apostle. I mean, really, he's an old, a gentleman that was in his 80s. And so in, in simplicity, and I won't, I won't preach anything, but I will say this. I realized it was something, number one, it's me humbling myself, getting beyond myself, realizing, yeah. Yeah. one, I'm getting on my knee, in front of somebody who I'm honoring, okay? Because we talk honor even just with, we think it's only just with honoring from a stage. But we all know this, sons and servants, the whole heart of this is honoring one another, affirming one another, speaking into one another. And so I found that even in Slavic culture or any culture we as men, sometimes we don't know how to even embrace and it not to be not sexual, right? We think embrace has to, so if we don't know from a father how to actually embrace or receive love, we don't know how to do that, but we all desire for it because God created that. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. And so what's beautiful about the foot washing is that I realized the Lord was allowing us to actually touch men, to be able to say, hey, we don't have to fully embrace. That could be afterwards and maybe so, like you said, you go from here to that. Mm -hmm. But realizing in that moment, I found the simplicity of it doesn't have to be every single time. But in those moments when the spirit stirs it, mm -hmm. what you're doing is actually washing because this is their walk. It's a prophetic sign yeah. of what they walk, where they go, what they're doing. They're already serving God, or maybe they are. I'm going to use Sasha as an example. We were at Kingdom Domain this year. And I'm saying this because the spirit of God loves people. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sasha, we're, we're sitting there, day, uh, sorry, Elijah and I, we're just sitting and we're praying. We're just having a great time praying. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God says, we're going to do a feet washing. We're in a hotel room. I'm thinking, and I'm a, I'm a smart aleck to the Holy Spirit. I'm like, Holy Spirit, I don't have a bucket. And he says, there's a trash can in the bathroom. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I go and I wash out the trash can, and they thought I went to take a shower. So we're having a holy moment, and then there's Jacob turning on the shower because I had to wash it out. <laughs> 
And I, you know, you got to use what you got. So I rinse it out, wash it out, and, and I bring it out. And, and Sosh and, and, and Elijah and I, and I'm like, hey, Sosh, the Holy Spirit told me we need to wash your feet. And he's like, no, you know, Sosh. Like, oh, no, no, thank you, brother. No, no, no. <laughs> he's like Jesus and so so we, we start washing his feet but again this is the part about it it's not about the actual just only about the washing it's about the affirming and mm. speaking over people because we can prophesy we can even prophesy over them but there's something when you actually touch them you're grabbing their feet and you're humbly saying I declare that whatever you've walked through we're washing off of my off God of. Mm. we are literally wow. saying it is yeah. no longer attached yeah. to you Think yeah. about Lazarus. When yeah. Jesus actually called, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came forth, but he told the people, untie him. Remove the grave clothes. Mm -hmm. So imagine we as the body have the power to That's release it. things off of people. So that as I'm laying hands, it's not just an act of, okay, we do it every time we do communion. And it's something tradition. No, we're doing it because we're literally washing off the past. Even though there's mm -hmm. forgiveness in our hearts, even though there's, an, there's something that's already been done, Man, it's a prophetic sign that we're saying you are no longer allowing any of those garments to be attached to you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to walk in free. Yeah. Jacob, this is what I feel like the revelation of that is, is, Peter, you need to allow the body, my body, to love on you. There's, you're an avenue yeah. for me to share my love. So mm -hmm. Don't shut yourself off from me to be able to love you because that's, that's an avenue God made me in his image, the image of God, which is love. He says, that's why he even created Eve. He says he had no avenue to love. He couldn't love the animals the same way he had to have someone comparable. That's there's no one. So you have to be an avenue and allow somebody to love on you. Yeah. For them to experience first the love from somebody right. and from their brother, and then allow that brother to love on you so that he can experience what that means. Wow. Mm -hmm. To be a part of that's what he said, you can't even be a part of me, a part of my body, body. if you don't allow yeah. this to be done. Because you can't give what you haven't received. Yes. So you can't give yes. love you haven't received. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So, so uh, Ilya was washing my feet and he said, like, Slavic, I honor you. And on behalf of the church or any people, ministers that hurt you, I, I apologize. And I felt so much love mm. that God, like, this is like Jesus but on the cross. Like, it was so surreal. It's like, he has nothing to do with it. He came here, he's just loving young people, like, but he's apologizing on behalf of the other people that but their ministry might have hurt you. Like, that meant, like, I don't know, but so much love in Jesus. It is. That's, and that is a powerful Lord. statement right there. Just uh, the, the last thing I'll say is that even that right there, we've seen that so many times. Actually, on behalf of, yes. as a leader, I repent on behalf of every person that is, every leader, pastor, deacon, elder, person, that family, you, member, yeah. family member, anybody, the authority in your life that has wounded you. Man, when you release that over somebody, it begins to unlock things where they don't even realize it. Because again, it's the soul. Mm -hmm. You love Jesus. You have devotional time. It's not a matter that you don't pray in the spirit. It does not mean you're not spiritual. But it's the fact of the soul, right? And that's why he said in 3 John, I pray that your soul would prosper. Yes. So, so many times we're about spirit, spirit, spirit. Yes, but right. God's actually right now in our generation and in, our, in the culture that God is building, the kingdom culture, is the fact that, wait a minute. I need to talk to you about the soul. That's right. Because that's where it's at. It's not even where the spirit of God is. It's the soul. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. So realizing God's bringing healing and restoration yes. and that so that you're God whole. does soul healing through souls, through people. Yeah. Because God wow. deals with the spirit, but he heals us through the soul. Like, why is it that someone gets saved supernaturally? Mm -hmm. Their spirit is made perfect, but their soul is still wounded and broken. Mm -hmm. Because it's souls that brought damage and it's it god uses souls to restore damage so he uses people because our subconscious is wired through experiences with humans and so god uses new experiences with that person to rewire the soul yeah because the supernatural part happens in the spirit but it's very natural you can be saved and damaged until there's human contact that begins to rewire you and so the importance of soul and that's why i love what you brought up lazarus because it was Jesus resurrected his spirit, but um, his people had to untie him. Yeah. And he activated them. Yes, he activated them. Right? Write the book. Yes. <laughs> I didn't need more notes that night. I really needed love. It transformed, it transformed me. Um, one knowing the love of the father but the love of these brothers you know they didn't owe they didn't owe nothing to me 
and just the way they loved on me and spoke into me yeah. and, and, and prophesied into me and declared over me, dude, they changed everything. This year has been transformational in my business, my marriage, you know, my, my kids, ministry, everything. Wow. And it's just one guys act that, of love. Yeah, guys change. that just love on you and speak into you. So we're all in ministry some, some way or another, um, you know, being here. Whether we went to a Bible college, whether we lead a small group in our church, whether we're a youth leader, or whatever we do, man, we have influence on 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 uh, whatever group you know God has given us. Mm -hmm. And man, just loving on them, speaking into them, wow. seeing things, asking Holy Spirit, you know, what are their mm -hmm. giftings? They might not know that. See, I didn't know a lot of the things that were already in me, and these guys just calling it out like, mm -hmm. man, there's this in you, really, and just just uh, declaring. Dude, I'm a different person because somebody chose to love on me in, in, in such an unbelievable way. And it's transforming. Those are the things, you know, when you can love your people and they can go love their people, man, that's growing the church. Notes isn't going to grow the church, man. It's your experience in the true love of God. Come on, and on. Yeah. Somebody, man, that changes everything. So, Let's go. Um, and I just, just want to share this quick testimony, man. Thank you guys for hearing from the Lord. And just, we can all hear from the Lord. Um, we don't have to be at a certain level, and even me teaching my kids that they can hear from the Lord, even at six and eight, it's been amazing. Um, but I don't, I, Eric, wow, you just can't. I just wanted to, it's, yesterday you were asking for a testimony, and I just wanted to say that even during Drawing Jesus, you had my paper, and yeah. bro, everything was so accurate. And when I came up to you and shared, girl, well, how many did I get right? Man, every single one was right on. So uh, I honor you that you hear from the Lord, brother. And yeah. Come on. Yours. It's so amazing um, that we can hear from God and we can encourage, and everything was just just perfect, um, and it's just phenomenal. Where which is where we can honor and love each other, hear from God, and this is building the church. Yeah. Cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed, subscribe below. I'll be releasing different things that the Lord did and sons and servants here. Um, all right. I'll see you guys in the next vid. Have it. Jesus full glorious day. Peace.